To understand how to calculate average and weighted average, let's first take a look on our data that is available for us to calculate and see what we are going to calculate. So let's see here in our views of tables and let's see invoicing. So what do we have here? We have a simple table where we have a customer number, amount, and invoicing date, and a due date. So the average that we are going to calculate is based on the difference of the due dates and the invoice dates. So we are going to calculate a term, a invoicing term for customers. All right, so let's take a look on how can we proceed with the calculation. So in this video, we are, I am going to show you um, three different ways to calculate average, two ways of a simple average, and how to calculate the weighted average. So let's take a look how to proceed with the calculations. So first, we have here a table, a matrix, where we can see customer number, quantity of invoices, and total invoice amount for each customer. So first, let's take a look at the average calculation, a simple average calculation. Let's see how can we do that. So let's go here at to the first measure of average. And let's try to understand together how we <clears throat> create the measure in order to see the results of 27.8 days of term invoicing terms. So a simple average, what we can um, understand, it's basically the sum of uh, elements divided by the total of these elements, the count of these elements. So ba basically what we are going to do is to create a function starting with divide. So divide asks us for uh, two different information to be divided. So the first one we are going to, to create a measure in order to calculate the total sum of days of each invoicing each invoice in our table so how can we do that we are going to use the sum x function and then sum x asks us to inform a table so we are going to inform invoicing table and then how can we go in how we are going to proceed with the calculation to calculate the differences between the dates so we are going to use date diff where the first element will be invoicing date from invoicing table and the second element will be due date so we are going to have the differences between due date and invoicing date and we are we need to have the results in day format so if an invoice is issued on September 25 and our due date is September 30 this difference will be 5 days so we have a term of 5 days of invoicing so, uh, and in the sum x function here, we are going to close parentheses of the sum x function, and then the next uh, element for the divide function, we are going to use the count ROS for the invoicing table. So, we first calculated uh, the total days of differences between due date and invoicing date for all customers for all table for the whole table 
we have the sum of each line uh, of dates diff between due date and invoicing date, and then we divide by count rows of the invoicing table, and then we get the results of 27.8 days. Okay, so this is the first way to calculate an average for uh, invoicing terms. The second way that we can uh, calculate an average for invoicing terms it's using by using the average x function <clears throat> for the average x function um, we can we we go one step further for the the first one where we do not need to use the divide function because the average x function will exactly do the same as for example uh, as the average function, the normal average function was doing, which was uh, calculating the sum of the total invoices differences between due date and invoice date. But what the average x uh, function does, it basically uh, excludes the need of um, uh, Calculate, calculating the each line, for example, of the table, because the average x will look at the whole table, will look at each line of the table, and will calculate the average based on two, uh, based but basically uh, asking us for a table which is the invoicing, and then we have. Uh, the expression that we are going to calculate. So what we are going to calculate basically is the date differences between invoicing date and due dates. And we will have the same results as the average, the first average calculated. Because it's the, basically the same situation, but first we made a manual calculation for the, the average because we have firstly at the first moment the sum of the total days differences of each line and then divided by the count rows the average x is basically the same situation but we don't need to divide this the total sum of days difference of days by the number of rows uh, average x function already does it for us so it's better to use in these situations. And finally, uh, the average, the weighted average um, uh, in the terms. Why we use a weighted average in, to calculate invoicing terms? We need to use the weighted average to calculate invoicing terms because we have, at, let, let's take a look at this, this example that we have here. We have some customers that we have invoicing amount much higher than the other ones. But we have the number of invoices, for example, issued is the same. So we needed to apply a weight to a weight to the to the customer. So we look we will we are going to calculate the terms, but looking at the total invoicing of each customer in order to have the weighted average calculated. So how can we do that? Um, we can simply apply the same um, first instructions as of a simple average calculated calculation, but then we need for each line, for example, each line of the table, we need to weight by the total invoicing, so or weight by the total amount of the line. By doing that, we are going to add a weight to each line of the table. Okay, so for example, if we had here one 
uh, invoicing with um, e invoicing date September 25 and due date September 30, we would have a term of five days. And if we had it, this amount of 100,000, for example, um, what this function, this calculation is doing is getting having these five days multiplying by a hundred thousand so we will have five hundred thousand uh, as result and then to finish our uh, function we need to divide again this number this result by the total invoicing. By doing that, we are going now to see at the whole table a weighted um, uh, average for this calculation in particular that we are willing to have. So that's why we use weighted average in uh, when we want to see invoicing terms for customers or suppliers, for example because we need to have an, a weighted average in order to consider uh, uh, our main customers which has which have uh, more sales they will have a a higher weight um, according uh, to our uh, total invoicing, basically uh, applying more um, weight to this final calculation. So then for our main customers will be more representative than the, the, the short ones. Uh, so this is why we use weighted average function or weighted average uh, to calculate invoicing terms. So that's it. Thank you.